We've been learning to spin, and I was going to show you a little bit of how we do it. So this is a spindle. I think it's a bottom drop spindle. And I think this could easily be made with some wooden projects. It's just a little eye hook at the bottom, or at the top, rather. And let me see. There, you can see that. And then it has this little wheel at the bottom. This wheel is about two inches. Really, I think it should come to about right here. You can make a top spindle by bringing it up to the top, but we couldn't get it any further than this. So it sits at the bottom and it's working pretty well. So these kits um, were given to me by a friend from a company called You Can Learn and it does a lot of early American crafts. So I'm going to show you a little bit about spinning. Mine is a top spindle, a drop spindle, um, and hers is a bottom spindle. So her weight is at the bottom and my weight is at the top, but they, and they pretty much work the same way. So you can take a liter piece of yarn and tie it around the bar here and that's going to be the leader and make sure that it's wool that'll stick better although you can spin cotton roving but it's a little more challenging because the fibers are shorter i'm going to take some roving first now we're going to feed it in. So one hand is going from the top and one hand is going from the bottom. And I have been told that I do mine a little bit differently. I, I've seen people hold it like this. And also I see a lot of right hand dominated people hold the roving with their left hand, but I actually hold the roving with my right hand and spin and do the string with my left hand. So you just have to decide what is easiest for you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my string and bring it up so, and then I'm gonna spin it. And it doesn't matter which way you spin it as long as you remember which way you spin it because it has to be spun consistently in one direction. I spin mine counterclockwise, just intuitively, and I would strongly suggest you do whatever you do intuitively. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and roll it through my fingers. It, it's not very far on my hand, it's like in that knuckle. And then I put my thumb here and I'm just rolling, right? I'm gonna roll and then let go. We're gonna spin it, and then I'm just going to overlap and feed. So let's see if I can explain this. You're pulling and then you're moving this finger up. Pulling the thread this way till I get the thickness that I want and then allowing the twist to move up the string. So spin it. It's a constant movement and it takes a long time to be able to get a consistent string. When you've almost reached the bottom or your comfort level, you're going to take that and wind it onto your spindle, loop it again, and we're going to start again. So I'm trying to get it back into focus. We're going to spin it, stretch, and then go up, stretch, and then move this finger slowly up. So when I'm stretching, um, that's a little thin. When I'm stretching, I'm holding so it doesn't allow the space between my fingers. Let's see here. To spin. And then when I move my finger up, I loosen that grip and I'm allowing it to sprint, spin the fibers. So the left hand, or your non-dominant, it just depends. I would figure out what works best for you because I think I do it differently. I think 
the vast majority of people do what I'm doing with my non-dominant hand, which is the spinning and the guiding of the fibers. Most people do that with their dominant hand and I'm not doing that. So try it back and forth. Just remember that you have to be going in the same direction, but when you're figuring it out, just do what works best for you and see how that piece got a little thin and it broke off, which is really common. So I'm gonna take this a little below and I'm gonna unravel and try not to let my spindle unravel the entire thing. And then I'm going to start again. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin with my right hand so that I can hold this and it won't unravel any further. And then I'm gonna take my roving and overlap it and allow it to twist together. Uh, and I got another one that's too thin for me. So I'm going to unravel that again, spin it and overlap and just spin. Now this is just one ply of the yarn and most of the yarns are two ply. So we'll make, I'll make several feet, however many feet I want of this one ply. And then I'll go back and combine two of the threads together with the drop spindle again. Maybe if I get to it, or maybe I'll have a box of one ply threads that never get put together. I'm going to hook that back on, start spinning. I'm gonna allow this last piece that I have to spin through. Then I'm going to overlap those, spin them together and then pull as it spins. And again, pull and spin. I tend to do thin yarn just naturally. Um, and it does take a while. If you find some bumpy areas, you can try to even those out by moving your fingers up and down as it's spinning. in the beginning when you're first learning. And I still consider myself a beginner. You'll have uneven thread. It'll take a while to be able to get an even consistency on your thread. and that piece came off completely. So what I'm gonna do here is back it up a little. I'm gonna spin it so that I can allow this area to spin, try and, and then I'm gonna work my way up here until I'm at the top and I'm gonna add more roving.